California. Bam! This state had it all, people. The glitz, the glamour, the awesome weather. It was easy to see why so many people flocked here for the last hundred years. I mean, look at the place. It really is probably the prettiest of all states, with the coasts and the mountains and the deserts. And the economy here has been bombing too. You know, with the tech boom in the Bay Area, the agriculture in the Central Valley, and all that is Southern California, with more tech, banking, arts and entertainment, transportation, and of course, tourism. The healthcare system here is pretty good. A lot of people make a lot of money, and the weather here is darn great. It's the most populous state and can be considered the world's fifth biggest economy. So what's the problem? A lot is the problem. Today's California is not the same California from before. We'll hear it from the people who live there eventually, but you don't have to ask people from California why it's become such a lousy place to live. Just look at what's happening there. And that's what this video is about, how the California dream has become the California nightmare. Tons of people are leaving California, and we're gonna talk about why. I left California myself 11 years ago, and every time I go back, I'm reminded as to why I left California for good. Let's take a look at why the California dream is dead. Sit in traffic, pay a lot for your house, enjoy the warm weather, try not to get crushed. Ah, oh, California. Huh, would you look at this? Now, this isn't a third world country somewhere like Haiti or India or the Philippines. No, this is downtown Los Angeles and just blocks from downtown proper where lots of wealthy and successful people live. In Los Angeles and other major cities in California, this has become a common sight, people. It's estimated there's 50,000 homeless people in Los Angeles, but nobody really knows. One thing's for sure, it's in the top five in the world for number of people without a home. Now you might say, why are there so many homeless people in California? Well, some of it has to do with the nice weather, but most of it is really because they're catered to. There's drugs everywhere, you get free stuff, nobody kicks you out, and they'll even give you free medical care and food. Why wouldn't you come to California if this is how you wanted to live your life, right? Now the homeless problem is just one example as to why the California dream has ended, but it's emblematic of the issues with the whole state in general, and most of it has to do with politics. All the tents and graffiti and trash, it's like this up and down the coast in California. Sure, sometimes people choose to live this way because they don't want to work and they want independence, but many of the homeless just can't afford to house themselves anymore here. California has always embraced diversity and its promised economic opportunity, but it seems those doors have shut. What's he doing? He's clearly on drugs. He's eating out of that dumpster. Listen. You can hear the propane tanks running in all these tents. They're cooking in there. There's literally ovens running in all these tents all over downtown LA. They have ovens in there. It's crazy. California's middle and lower classes are kind of screwed. It's really expensive to live here, even for the college educated crowd. You know what the average cost for a home in California is? 592,000 smackers. So these days, both mom and dad have to work to be able to afford their mortgage. So they both need a car and they need childcare and they both have to sit in traffic for hours and hours a week. The high taxes and high gas prices and the cost to own a home are so high now that people can't take a moment to breathe and take in California's natural beauty. At least the parts where it's not trashed. Good luck moving here and affording a decent house in a decent neighborhood anymore, pal. In LA alone, only one third of homes are owner occupied. So two and three houses are rented and California's liberal environmental laws block new housing construction. So there's not enough affordable housing being built either. California also has the highest marginal tax rate in the nation. Where's all that money going? Certainly not to pay firefighters and teachers well enough to make them happy. Oh, I mean, there's plenty of rich people here. Many are clustered in LA and San Francisco and in other areas along the coast but this state definitely has become one of the haves and have nots. California's middle and lower classes have been squeezed out. Now let's talk about the lower class here. California's welfare system has created generational poverty and that only creates more dependence. Why work hard? We can just skimp off the system, right? 
If you can't afford something, you can just steal it. That's right. In California, anything under 950 bucks is considered a minor offense. It's not a felony. You don't go to jail. You don't even get in trouble. So you have all these criminals walking in stores and just grabbing whatever they want and waltzing out without anybody doing anything about it. Well, as you can imagine, stores are closing permanently. They can't afford to stay open because Californians are literally robbing them blind. Well, there's one, yeah, there's like a CVS right by me. And when I was talking to one of the workers in there, they're saying it's like a daily occurrence. People no way. come in, yes, people come in and they, you know, grab what they want and they can just dash out and they can't do anything about it. That's what they're they're telling me, you know, that their their hands are tied. They're not able to do anything about it. So um, since they, I guess, since they can't, then, you know, a lot of these stores are like, we can't keep doing this or they're stealing our merchandise and they end up just, you know, closing their, their stores down. California's middle and lower classes also suffer at the school level. California schools used to be the envy of the nation, but now statewide schools here are ranked 38th in the country. One reason is overcrowding. California's laws make it tough to build affordable housing. So what happens is the schools in the poor and middle class areas struggle. They're underfunded. Teachers are fed up. A lot of the kids misbehave. And in a lot of schools, you can't even reach the parents, much less get their help. A lot of schools in California don't have a nurse or a counselor, but they have police officers on campus. And then these kids leave the California schools, haven't passed, but remain far behind. And that's even if they can afford to go to college here. Now, if you live in California, there's a 100% chance you know somebody who left the state for good. And probably because of the things I'm talking about in this video. For the first time in more than 100 years, this state saw a population decline. Over the last decade, 6 million people left California, while only 5 million people moved in. That's a loss of more than 2% of this state's total population in 10 years. And a recent poll showed more than half the state's population is considering leaving the state for good. What the hell? Now, San Francisco is seeing the worst of the outward migration. Talk about an unfair deal. Tons of people moved here and they work so hard to be able to live in a progressive city and they have great jobs and they can barely afford rent. Meanwhile, San Francisco hands out tents and food and drugs to their homeless population. That's not fair. But even though lots of people are leaving this state, it's still really crowded here and the overcrowding has ruined a lot of the culture, big buildings, track homes everywhere. It's just not as artsy or funky or unique or charming here anymore. There's just too much growth. Maybe the population loss is a good thing, huh? Now, of course, you're going to hear that people are leaving California and they're taking their liberal beliefs with them. People in other states have a phrase, don't California my state. I mean, that's fair. Nobody wants newcomers coming in and changing the political culture, but that's not the complete story. More and more people leaving California are the ones sick of the crap and they want to move to a place that's more welcoming and one that's more safe and affordable. They don't want a California your state because they don't want California at all anymore. And where are they going? A lot of the California refugees are moving into western states, typically anything from Texas west. Lots of them are going to Texas, Arizona, Colorado, Utah, Idaho, and Montana. And that's not going very well up in Montana, I'll tell you that. Sell your house in California and you have a lot of buying power. Take that cash and move to Montana and you get a lot more home for a lot less and you don't have graffiti everywhere and homeless people everywhere and trash everywhere. But that also means the locals are getting priced out. A lot of people out West are so sick of the rich Californians coming in that they harass them and even assault them. One rule of thumb is take that California plate off your car as soon as you get to your new home or somebody might take it off for you. Or you can just explain yourself. One guy says people are hostile to Californians moving in, but I say, yeah, I'm from California, but don't worry, I'm not bringing any of that crap up here. I'm escaping it. Then everything's fine. There's a lot of opposition to people bringing their politics up here. <laughs> yeah, you think? Another woman said, when somebody asks, you're almost apologetic when you say you're from California. <laughs> That's just crazy. People used to be proud to be from California. I'm from California. I'm so cool. Now they're embarrassed about it. It's not just the people who can't afford to live here. Big companies can't either. Charles Schwab, Tesla, Oracle, Hewlett Packard, Carl's Jr., Jamba Juice, even Dole, the world's biggest produce company, they all left California. Look at this list of all the companies and influencers who left California in just the last five years alone. 
What the hell? I mean, Chief Executive Magazine called California the worst state for business. Why? Regulation, workers' compensation costs, healthcare costs, rent, and of course, taxes. The corporate tax rate here is 9%, which is the eighth highest in the country. Economically, California is just ordinary. Hollywood is a global thing now. You don't need Hollywood. And a lot of the computer industry has moved to China. And the aerospace and defense industries, they've been reduced to almost zero in the state. And California's farmers don't have it any easier. There's been a drought here for like ever now, and they can't afford to water their crops if they can even get water to begin with. You'd think a state this massive could figure out how to desalinate its water. I mean, there's a huge ocean right on its border, right there. And the wildfires here are off the charts. Used to be, you could escape all the California drama by heading for the hills. Now, the hills are all on fire. There's no fire season in California anymore. It's all here. Sure, California is going to continue to add tons of people, even as tons of people move away. But all these new people coming in are not going to be treated as equally as past newcomers. The state is just unprepared to offer people upward mobility. The unbroken run of prosperity, that's over. Now what about the politics? Well, they're trying to recall their governor right now, if that says anything about how Californians feel about where their state's headed. I mean, it seems that every election cycle, California gets more and more liberal. Anything from outlawing straws and plastic bags to making it nearly impossible to add bike lanes because, you know, the endangered turtles or whatever. And you might be aware that California prisons were overcrowded, but then they started letting all the criminals out. And guess what? All those criminals, arsonists, and creeps, they're going right back out and committing crimes all over again, all over California. There's no three strikes and you're out anymore here. More like one strike and you're back out on the streets the next day. Maybe it's just that California grew too fast. It all started with the discovery of gold in the 1840s. People came from all around the world, making this state the most diverse in the country. Then business and economy thrived here, and it got to the point that everybody wanted a piece of the California dream. It was once said that in California, the lights went on all at once, in a blaze, and they've never been dimmed. <laughs> well, until now, because this state is so progressive and all, they're relying more and more on green energy to keep the lights on. The problem with that is, the new renewable energy plants aren't as efficient as they need to be, and they have rolling blackouts here all the time. And ironically, the hydroelectric plants are shutting down because of a lack of rainfall. The fifth richest economy, and they can't keep the lights on. In a perfect California, everybody would have a home they could afford, farmers could water their crops, people would pick up their damn trash, and there would be no lines at Disneyland. But of course, nothing's perfect. That would never happen. What we're seeing in California today is far from perfect, and it likely won't ever be close to it. So what's going to happen here? Well, the people that are leaving don't care. They're out. The ones who remain are going to have to try to figure out a solution to all these problems. I mean, they say all empires eventually collapse. Is that what we're seeing right now? Can California fix itself? Can the people who've ruined it make it whole again? Or are they just going to take their broken California dreams to their graves? Because right now, the California dream is not people like this working hard to get somewhere in life. This is the new California dream, and a lot of people are living it. But enough of me complaining. Let's hear more California people give their perspective. So you started Red State Relocate initially to help people get out of California. That's just crazy. Yeah, initially, yeah. I mean, California is losing, uh, well, I say every year, approximately 500,000 people leave California. And about 400,000, I'm being conservative on the numbers here, but about 400,000 move in. So we're losing for about the last 10 years, we lose about 100,000 people. And the last census showed that, right? The last census showed that we lost about a million people in California. We lost an electoral vote. We lost a house seat. You know, and those, those things don't happen in states that are healthy, right? That are functioning properly. People are leaving. And so for me, I saw, and how do I say it? it's like, the elephant in the room is we know why they're leaving, right? They're, they're leaving because California is not serving them. And a lot of that is for political reasons. They're just, the, the politics in California has gone so far left. The pendulum has just really swung. And people are just saying, you know what? I might've been, I talked to a guy actually a couple weeks ago. He was a liberal guy from LA. He said he was a liberal guy his whole life. And he goes, I had to get out of there. It was, it was too much. He moved outside of Nashville. And yeah. So give people an idea on when people come to you and they're like, I want to leave California, help me get out of here. 
What are some of the things that they're telling you that they're frustrated with and why they're trying to leave? Yeah, the main thing they're frustrated, well, especially I think the coronavirus definitely threw a big monkey wrench in a lot of it. People have been leaving for a decade already. Um, coronavirus really, really impacted people in terms of just the fact that their businesses were shut down, right? They're, they're, a lot of them are just saying, I just don't want to be here because they never thought that they could be shut down for so long. California is really unique that we were the first to shut down and the last to open. You know, there's, there's a lot of other states that their restaurants and bars and all that and, and hotels have been open for, for a year now. And in California, it, it, it was just recent. So yeah, coronavirus was definitely a big one. Um, and then just the, the work from home thing was big where people were saying, hey, I can cash out of my house in, in the Bay Area and I can go buy you know, a, a much nicer, bigger property, a four bedroom house and have more elbow room. Cause you know, here people are kind of cramped in. So, you know, you can sell a three bed, two bath house here in San Jose for, you know, over a million dollars and they can go buy something in another state where it's just better living overall. And they, again, they've got more elbow room. They can have a own dedicated office. So that's big, the work from home, the coronavirus. And uh, yeah, that's, that seems to be the most of it. And then, yeah, I think just a lot of the the, just the political direction of the state is driving a lot of people out, the regulation, all that, you know, it's just, it's hard to start a business. And uh, yeah, so that's what I hear the most anyway. Mm -hmm. Give, so the start a business part, what, what, what kinds of stuff, if you know, does California do to make it more difficult for small business owners? Um, well, I'd use my brother-in-law, for example, my brother-in-law in the Central Valley. He, uh, this was, I'm probably going to get the years wrong. Time flies by, but I'm going to say probably about five years ago, seven years ago or so, he started a pest control business. And he got his own trucks and he got his own thing going and, and talking to him just in trying to get the pest control business off the ground with all the regulation and what products he could use, what he couldn't use, right, for residential, for commercial, for his vehicles, all the licensing for the vehicles. And then when he started hiring his own, his first employee, he just talked about what a headache that was with all the red tape and everything he had to get just to get one employee. I think he's got like three now, maybe. So, um, but things like that. Yeah. Uh, I, I used to work in a restaurant, right? So if you want to work in a restaurant, you know, you can definitely, oh, hold on, script me. Uh, if you want to work in a restaurant for sure or open a restaurant, um, it just becomes really difficult, right? I mean, it's, we want the health department for sure, right? We want people to have, you know, good, healthy, you know, safe food. But you talk to some of these business owners and it's just, it takes such a long time to get that restaurant open. And because they have to go through so, you know, so many levels of bureaucracy just to, just to open the door for the first day. And they're in so much debt when it first opens, you know, and so, that's just people are starting to say, hey, man, I got to it's going to take me a year and a half to open my, my little cafe here in, uh, you know, in the Bay Area. And I can maybe just go, you know, to Nevada, one state over Arizona, and I can be open in three months. Yeah, it's it's kind of a no brainer why people are leaving. So. Mm -hmm. And you sent an email and you said, you know, California used to be great in the last seven to 10 years. It's gone downhill. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think anybody there would disagree with you. What are some examples of some things that you feel uh, California has gone downhill? Oh gosh, I mean, our where do I start? I mean, uh, I mean, yeah, I think yeah, crime. I mean, that's the one thing we're seeing the most right now, right? We're seeing the 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 a lot of our I would say the attorney generals, right? The the police departments are really handcuffed now, and what they can do. You're seeing it on the news all the time where people can steal up to like, what is it, eight or $900 worth of stuff and you can't do anything about it. So it, what's happening is that's shutting down a lot of businesses. We got CVSs and Walgreens that are shutting down. So people in their neighborhoods where they used to go over here to go get their medicine from Walgreens, it's closed, right? So so yeah, crime has definitely skyrocketed a lot. Um, the homelessness issue uh, is, is, it's much more visible now, right? I mean, we've always had a homelessness issue in California, but it's, it's, it's much more visible now because it, it, how do I say it? It doesn't really seem like they really want to fix the problem, right? That's what, that's the feeling you get. And so uh, in California recently, anyway, I'll say, or maybe not so recently, but it, it really seems like the homelessness issue in California, there's, there's so much money behind it now. There's so much money being thrown at the problem that it, it almost feels like it's become corrupted in a way. When, when you've got politicians running on fixing this problem, you got nonprofit organizations set to benefit from, from the money from that. It, it almost seems like they're they're not trying to fix the problem, and so it's, it's becoming more more visible now. And people are at the point where they say, "Look, I I don't feel safe walking down the street." They're trying to they want to go to the park with their kid, and there's homeless people sleeping in the park. And and you know, once upon a time, I used to you know they wouldn't be there. The police or somebody would just say, "Hey, go go sleep over there," but not maybe not right in the middle of the mall. <laughs> you know, so 
so yeah, that's that's another big one. But yeah, we we can go on and on. I mean, they, you know, all the issues in California. There doesn't seem to be anything here, maybe other than the weather and the good food and the good wine, that's really keeping people here. You know, and so if you can afford to stay in California, it's a beautiful place. But for the majority of people, like I said, half a million every year leaving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the cost of living. I mean, there's there's people that have really good jobs. Um, you know, you go up to the Bay Area and you get a job making a hundred K and you're sleeping on a couch in a crummy apartment in the Tenderloin district. Yep. Um, down in the LA area, I know most parents both have to work to be able to afford the mortgage, which means childcare costs and both people have have to have a car. And yep. it's just people can't just relax and then take in the beauty of California and and all it has to offer because they're constantly working or in their car. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm in the Bay Area. I live in San Jose. And if you want to go to Santa Cruz on the weekend, when I was growing up, you want to go to Santa Cruz, you hopped over the hill and you went and found a parking spot and you went to the beach. I mean, it's it's an hour just getting over the hill now. You know, it's just, it's so crowded and it's good. I mean, it's a good thing that people want to get out, right? But it's it's everything's just really crowded. There's there's really been no, how do I say, there's there's no more, it's really hard to build this, you know, in California, developers aren't building, it's too expensive. And so, you know, you've got a lot of people still coming. So then you just got a lot more people living in the existing housing that's here. And, you know, then everybody wants to go to the beach <laughs> at the same time. So, so it's no longer even fun to even go to the beach because, right, family's all stressed out just getting there, right? So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's changed a lot. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, how did California get to this point? I think on the political side of how it went so left, a lot of it comes from the tech companies. So these the the tech companies in California, uh, they're massive, right? The 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 taxes that they pay are monstrous. They're they're really what's keeping California afloat for the most part. It's it's they're they're really big. And what's happening is they're hiring a lot of these kids that are coming out of the colleges that haven't really been exposed to any other opinion than the than I don't even call it liberal anymore because liberal. I I used, my friends were liberal. I grew up in the Bay Area. My friends were liberal, right? And liberalism used to be about, you know, in, individual rights and, and freedom of speech, right? They, they protected the individual. They, they, they loved to debate, right? They, they, they always talked about this, you know, this open arena of ideas. And, and then it kind of came the progressive style, right? Where these universities were pushing out the, what they call the progressive. And that became a little bit more of the identity politics, right? Where it was kind of the, the victimhood ideology, that kind of stuff. And, and it's now it's almost like a, to go back to these tech companies, these, these people are working in these tech companies and they're, they only have one point of view. It's the far left, what Mark Levin calls it the, the American Marxist, right? Where it's it's authoritarian now. And, and to get to the, the question you had is because of that authoritarianism, because of the, if you don't believe what we believe, we're no longer just gonna not hire you, but we're gonna cancel you now. We're gonna run you out of town. And I think on the political side of California, that's really what's happening. It's, it's become so far left the tech companies are encouraging this. You know, you got you got a lot of these employees in these tech companies that they're organizing boycotts within the company because they don't want to work with some person that they found out is, you know, a conservative or something. And these companies, instead of telling these people to go back to work and shut up and go do your job, they bow to their demands and they fire these people that they hire, you know, these, these you know, non-conforming. And, and so, you know, it's, uh, I think that's where a, where a big, big problem has, has been uh, in, I'll just say specifically in Silicon Valley, but again, because tech is so big in California, it has a big impact on the state. Yeah. And if they keep screwing up, all the, the tech companies are slowly peeling away one by one and moving to other states. So mm -hmm. yeah. keep poking that they're going to lose that tax base. A, a good, a good article to read on that. It's uh, Victor Davis Hanson wrote an article. I don't want to it was a while ago, you know, five plus years ago. It's called two Californias. Highly recommend anybody uh, yeah. to go read that article because that's what he talks about. He's from Selma. He's from the Central Valley. And uh, my mom lives not far from there. So my family's from the Valley. My, I'm half Mexican. So my, my mom's family comes from Mexico. They were all field workers. You know, they, they, you know, they lived, you know, that, that Central Valley kind of life. They actually raised a family on field workers' money back in the day. I mean, you can't do that anymore. But, uh, but yeah, he really talks about how the, what the Valley used to be and what it's really turned into. And, and what it is now and how the the coasts and the cities how again what i talked about earlier where their policies are impacting these people in the valley and it's really hurting them and that's why you're driving through the valley now and you just see poverty it's 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 bad and uh but the people that voted in the policies that 
cause that they don't see that because they don't ever go into the valley and so it's what are the policies that are impacting the central valley workers since you brought it up what what, what specifically is the state doing to because i mean that's lower class and we you know the middle class is getting squeezed out mm -hmm. lower class is getting squeezed out too can you give me an example of of policies that are impacting central valley workers yeah i mean i think I mean, there's, there's the water issue and there's the illegal immigration issue, right? So water being the first one is that you've had ranches in the Central Valley that have been in families for generations. And, you know, this is where our food, right? Majority of the food, these fruits, vegetables, nuts, all that. You know, I mean, so much of it is grown in the Central Valley, California. And these and the, the politicians of the state just shut the water off for, for many of these farms. And, and, you know, I don't want to get conspiracy theory on it, but, you know, a lot of these ranchers... Or Republicans, you know what I mean, and and they've been Republicans for generation, and it's oh, you know, maybe maybe our politicians are maybe bringing the pain a little bit. I don't know. I don't like mm -hmm. said. I don't. I don't know. That's the cause, but you know, why would you stop water to a farm? You know, and uh, so that's a big that's a big problem. You're getting farms that their farms are not being sold. They're not growing. They're not producing now. So that impacts people. That impacts the the workers that used to work those farms in those fields. Um, the immigration issue is big. The illegal immigration is big because. You know, my grandparents and, you know, my mom, when she was younger, they used to, they picked in the fields and it was a, it was a valid business back then. Cesar Chavez was trying to unionize all these, all these workers, trying to make it a legit business. And the biggest threat to the, to the farm worker was the illegal immigrant coming in and doing it at half the cost. So unfortunately, Cesar Chavez lost that battle. You know, he lost that battle. The, the, the lower wage, you know, immigrant came in. And then on top of that, they take that money out of the state. Once they make their money, right? They've, they've already undermined the wage of the legal worker. They've made the money. Then they take the money out of the state and out of the country. And, and that causes a big problem. And then on top of that, you've got, say you've got a general contractor who you know lays tile and floors, does drywall, and he's licensed and right, got in, insured and he's got a team and they're all legit. And then he goes and does a bid on a, on a house and then he gets undermined by right somebody who came here illegal, takes the cash and then leaves the state and the country again for another six months, you know? And so, so that's where it's at. I think the water's really impacted the Valley. Devin Nunes fights that fight hard for the water. Um, and yeah, just the immigration issue, how it's impacted jobs. And uh, like I said, nobody wants to go down there and actually see it because it's hard to see. Uh, go in there, go, you know, go to my, my family's from a little town called Cutler. There's Cutler and Dinuba and Orosi. Drive through those towns, you know, drive around and look around and, and, and ask yourself, you know, how did this happen? You know, what, what's going on here? You know, and, then my, and I love that place. That's where my family is. I was just down there a couple weeks ago, but you know, you, you shake your head. And for me, look, I'm half Mexican. And, you know, when I see my people, my Mexican people living like that, it makes me mad. You know, it makes me mad, right? Because it's, it's like that saying about the opposite of, love isn't hate, the opposite of love is indifference, right? And so when, when, when our politicians can see my people living like that and just be completely indifferent to it, it doesn't make them mad to do something about it. That's what bothers me, you know? And so hopefully, like I said, hopefully the pendulum swings back. We start getting some attention on the people that are struggling down there. Um, in the meantime, I'm trying to get people, right, who are tired of all that too and get them somewhere better too. So I read your email, um, you know, why you're leaving California. Um, it's politically intolerant. Crime is getting crazy. Homelessness is rampant. The school boards are indoctrinating kids. Taxes are unrelenting. And undocumented illegal immigration is supported and tolerated. That, that's a pretty big list. I'm surprised you haven't left sooner. It's just, it's not the California that I grew up in. And change is fine. But it's moving in a direction where I feel like it's incompatible with my goals for my family with California specifically where I'm living in Southern California. I think crime's the number one reason why I would want to move uh, and it's petty crime, but people steal catalytic converters, which I, I had never known was a thing. And it's like people get, uh, the packages delivered to their front porch and those are stolen immediately because um, there's people who make it their part-time job to follow the delivery trucks. And it's crazy because in California, they're not prosecuting these crimes and the police 
and I don't think it's the fault of the police. I think it might be higher level um, and what the police are instructed to do, but they don't even pursue um, the, the thieves and people have them on the ring doorbell cameras and nothing ever happens. Um, another thing happening in my neighborhood is uh, strangers are wandering into the backyard, people's backyard, uh, which is crazy to me and just scoping out what they have and stealing stuff from like within their property. It's, it's dangerous. And, um, it scares me for my kids. It seems like the teachers are really politically involved where I would, and I'm speaking to public school teachers and things that I, that I read. Um, whereas I would like them to focus purely on academics and then leave like the social cultural education to the parents. I don't know that California is very good at, at um, not crossing that line. Uh, taxes, my property taxes have gone up every single year since I bought my house, which is, it's crazy to me. Um, but every single year, like clockwork that goes up, the gas is really high. My water bill is insane. It's my water bill is crazy. My electricity bill, I just got a notice that they're changing the plan and how to adapt for that. And don't try not to use your electricity during the day. And um, so, <laughs> so we'll see what the electricity bill is the next, the next time it comes. It seems like California, the priorities are out of order. There was this big movement about plastic straws and um let's get let's get rid of plastic straws and if a server offers a plastic straw to patrons they can be fined i think the fine was something like a thousand dollars there's so many bigger problems than plastic straws in california it was like a head scratcher that they would put any energy or resources toward that when we have thousands of homeless we have you know, crime, petty crime, arguably, but crime running rampant in regular neighborhoods. Um, I didn't, I didn't understand why plastic straws was such a priority. Uh, what else did I have? <laughs> what else did I have? Um, illegal immigration. I think California is having a hard time. So for, we'll talk about like education. The classrooms are really full. Um, and I think any any more people coming into California, it's like, so what's the plan to support these people? And it seems like the California plan to support these people, no matter who's elected. So I'm not saying like, oh, it's because of this political party or, or this other one. Um, it seems like the plan is to raise taxes. <laughs> and... Um, that doesn't sound like a good plan to me. <laughs> it sounds like the, you know, the beginnings of, of wanting to move. Immigrants are great, but I think we have to figure out a plan where we can support the people who are here, um, not financially support them, but have an infrastructure that makes sense for everybody. Everybody's safe. Everybody's getting a, a good quality education. Everybody has um, housing that makes sense. And, then we work on on growing, but and I feel very little um, optimism that politically any any politician from either side can help save California. I feel like it's so far gone, which is which is sad because I love California. California is awesome. That's why you still have people coming here, even <laughs> even though it is so crowded and it is so expensive and there is a lot of crime. Uh, and the taxes are really high. I uh, I just want people who are nice to their neighbors. I don't care what color or race or culture they are. Just kindness and and just I don't know common sense. I've got uh, three girls and I was just struggling every month in and out. Um, you know I wasn't spending extravagantly or anything like that and. Uh, it, it was just a struggle in month in and month out. And um, 
finally we we just decided that enough was enough you know we figured the high cost of living and all that stuff and i mean it, it's really you know pe- it's a huge difference <laughs> to be honest you know my, my company offered me a, a chance to transfer and uh, i took it and it's you know it, it's been amazing ever since then you know normally i remember before you know you would see sometimes there would be somebody you know trying to set up camp or something and um you would have like an officer saying you know talking to them you know letting them know hey you can't sit here it's a, it's a public you know place and and now they you know they're not they're not taking care of it you know and i know people get upset and they're like hey they're homeless you know you can't just push them aside and yeah that's true but at the same time we also have our public areas that we should be able to enjoy you know walking down the street um you know going to a restaurant without you know having somebody there that you might not know what they are going to do you know they could be harmless but you don't know that and like where i work sometimes we might pass a person who is homeless and um, you know, you kind of got to be on your guard, you know, because you're not sure what that person, you know, what their background is, what they're suffering from, if they're coming down off of drugs or something. And, you know, you don't know if they're going to lash out suddenly or, you know, so, I mean, even though you don't want to think that way, the truth is you don't know who that person is. And, you know, when you see these people, you just have to, I mean, you have to be careful, you know, and it's, it's dangerous to the community. I would advise I wouldn't advise anyone to move to California for any reason, um, unless you have like a really good tech gig there. Because if you want to live on, uh, if you want to live a good life, you know, a family of four people, two adults, two children, you need to make make well above a hundred thousand dollars a year, probably close to one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, and that's living a modest lifestyle. The compromise you make is that that money doesn't go very far. And what we found out was that it was impossible for us to own a home and meet our financial goals. The main thing is it's just, they make it really hard to make a living here for a normal person. Um, everything is is overpriced. It's very expensive to live here, whether you rent or you have a mortgage or you're looking to buy property or a home. It's just outrageous. It would be nice to move somewhere where there's not as much population. Um, things might be a little bit cheaper, a little easier to live, a little fresher with the air, a little more rain. We never get rain here. They make it hard to do things. Um, the regulations are very hard. We, uh, we've been trying to sell our ranch here and we had to go through the process of getting easements through our property. We didn't have legal easements and it was, it took us about a year working with Santa Barbara County and all the agencies just trying to get an easement to our property so that we can sell. So I feel like it's just a struggle to do almost everything here, but for people that live kind of like we do, I think it's time to move on. (laughs) Yeah. Do do you have a lot of friends that are also friends and family that are also thinking about leaving California? Actually, yeah, my brother, um, I'm actually flying out on uh, August 25th to help him move out here. Uh, In the area that he lives in, there's not a single house for rent. Uh, He he was living with a buddy that decided to sell his house. And uh, now that you can go on Trulia, there's not a single house in the area to rent. Uh, He tried buying a house. Uh, he offered, it was like, 10, I think it said 10,000 more than what they were asking. And they came back and they wanted 15,000 more than what they were asking. And uh, they, they wanted a, a clause that if, if, for whatever reason, the deal didn't work through, uh, that they kept all the escrow money. And and that's just the, you know, he's tried a few different times. He keeps getting that same trend. And uh, so he's he's had enough with it also. And he he's moving out here. How difficult is it for a middle class family to exist in California comfortably? I think that um, for, from my experience, if you're if your middle class is extremely difficult, if you're if you're really rich or you're really poor, it doesn't seem like it's so bad because if you're really rich, you can afford all the stuff. If you're really poor, you're going to get help. But if, if you're in that middle class, I mean, it's a struggle. You know, um, I, I personally, whenever I left California, I was uh, $15,000 in debt, uh, not including cars or anything like that. I was just credit cards and, and just trying to, you know, do something for my kids. 
and uh, net, in the three years that I've lived here, uh, I've I've got zero debt ex- outside of my house. I, I bought a house, so I mean, it really is night and day. They're trying to build up, I think, like the Redlands area. Um, some of the and they're trying to build more homes, but like the starter homes, these starter homes with the small yards and everything, um, they start at I think like five hundred thousand. And you know, depending, some are uh, some are six hundred thousand. And these are smaller homes, and you're thinking that it's supposed to be for maybe like a start a family to start off with. And um, geez, like you have, you have to really be making a lot to to get into those type of homes. And that's like the basic home here. There's definitely a big anti-California sentiment, and it's I'll say this: it is a big pet peeve of mine. And if you got the time, and I'll go on a rant <laughs> right now, but it's a big pet peeve of mine because. You know, these Californians who are living here, right, they're, they're having a real hard time living here. Their kids are not being served. And it's a really difficult situation for them. And what they're doing is they're looking out across the country and saying, hey, where can I go where I can live a better life? And they're getting states like like Idaho and Texas who are giving them a middle finger. They're just putting their hand up and saying, don't move here. We don't want no Californians. Right. And and for me, I I, I use the or an essay, obviously, analogy, but I just I try to use sometimes the the phrase of, you know, the instead of giving a, you know, a, a, a glass of cold iced tea, they're giving them a cold shoulder, right? And, and, you know, these are the people that they should be welcoming. And, and I use the 2018 election in Texas, for example. Uh, Beto O'Rourke went up against Ted Cruz. And Beto O'Rourke, that nut <laughs> that he is, he came within two percentage points of beating Ted Cruz. I mean, it was, he was within two points of being the senator of Texas. And when they did the data, they looked at the data, they found that the majority of people that voted for Beto O'Rourke were native born Texans, right? And the people, the majority of people that voted for Ted Cruz were non-native born Texans, meaning i.e. transplants, meaning a lot of Californians. And so I, I can't get mad. I was going to actually do a video on this, but, um, you know, I was just thinking, I was like, you know, when Texas gets their, you know, gets a Democrat senator, they're going to be coming to California, right? They're going to be begging Californians to move there because we had 6 million Californians voted for Donald Trump. That's There's more Californians voted for Donald Trump than Texans, okay? So, you know, they walk around like, oh, we're, right, we're the conservative. Well, there's more Californians voted for Donald Trump than, than, than Texans did. Um, oh, where was I going with that? There's that point. Um, I, oh, yeah, I think my guesstimate is I'd say probably another 2 million didn't vote for Donald Trump, at least in the last election, because they just don't like his personality. And I think another 2 million just stayed home because they said, look, he's not going to win the state of California, so I'm just not going to go. So we've got a pool of potentially 10 million conservative valued voters. And you got Texans who had Beto O'Rourke come within two percentage points and Texas to say, don't move here. We don't want you. I mean, like I said, they're, they're going to be begging Californians to move there when their, their senator or their governor goes blue. And uh, and I'll say this too about Idaho, just real quick on Idaho. Uh, they complain a lot about Californians moving there, but Idaho is actually getting more red. When you look at the policies that are enacted, like was it a year, two years ago, where they went with permitless carry, you know? So if all these liberal Californians are moving there, why are their gun laws getting more relaxed, right? Now they have permitless carry there. They've, they've got Republican representation across the board and California's been moving there for decades, right? So people are moving to those areas, like you said, for a reason. That they, Their values align with those places. And I think people in those states, they don't like the population increase. They don't like the traffic and the rising housing costs, which is understandable. You know? But if they're going to say, don't move here, don't bring your politics here, the data is not showing that that's actually happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's just too bad because a lot of the, if that's accurate, then that means a lot of the sensible people that are leaving California or, or taking their sensibilities into other states, which means California is going to be even kookier as the people with sense take off, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they just they're or they're just going somewhere else. They're or you know or they're moving to counties within California. The Fresno is like I said, the fastest growing city in California for a reason. Maybe they're looking at Idaho and Texas where they'd be a good red vote, and they're saying, well, you know what? All I see online is these people who don't want me. So maybe I'll just move to the Central Valley where Devin Nunes is, you know, the repre- our representative. And, and there's a lot of tax benefits, too, with staying in California as well, um, especially like with Prop 13, their, their property taxes, all that. So there are some incentives to stay. 
Uh, and, and maybe that's what's happening. They're just, they're moving down there and they're not actually going somewhere where, you know, they can actually have an impact on, on their state. So their, their votes kind of wasted, you know. But I feel like um, there are some people in the millennial group and then also in Generation Z um, that are so focused on uh, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, um, what celebrities are doing uh, that they're not really paying attention to, you know, what's happening in our state, you know, not realizing, I feel like, how expensive things are and that it wasn't always like this. A home to purchase wasn't always, you know, $600,000 for your regular starter home. But we decided to leave because it's too expensive and too crowded. And um, to me, it seems like there's an, there's already an, an, an an ecological apocalypse happening or it's imminent, right? Because there's last fall, we had this day where the sky was entirely orange and that was caused by the wildfires from the, I think from Oregon and Northern California. And it wasn't the first time we had really bad smoke, but it was the first time we had smoke where it was so bad. The whole day was pretty much occluded by it. You know, it, it, the sky was this kind of drab orange color, and it really felt like, you know, the four horsemen of the apocalypse could come riding over the horizon. <laughs> it was that bad. But, it, you know, it's really concerning when you're raising kids and you're thinking about, okay, well, there's we're running out of water. What, what are they going to do to provide enough water for everybody? But also it's really expensive and really crowded. Um, we wanted to get out because, um, we wanted an easier pace of life and we wanted more bang for our buck as far as our whole money, um, our entire financial life went. In Anaheim, there was a huge homeless encampment right up against Angel Stadium. When they cleaned it out, I, it just, it went on for, I think a half mile along the freeway. It was tent after tent. Um, they found like stolen bicycles, they found hypodermic needles, they found literally tons of human waste, and they found firearms. So it's uh there is a criminal element mixed in with the you know the people who genuinely are having a tough time and need assistance, um, financial assistance to get a leg up and and start over. Uh, and then the, the people with mental illness, there's just a mixed bag now of who's out there on the street. And um, it's it's scary when you have so many, like, how do we tackle this? And, and what is the risk of having all of these people who are migratory and, you know, kind of in, encroaching on residential neighborhoods and people with families and young children, what do you do? You know, we have, the, in the United States, we have kind of like this uh, ideal of California that's like a really cool, hip place to live where there's all these neat things. And there are, you know, like there's the Sierras, there's the Pacific Ocean, there's uh, all these iconic places. But for instance, if you go to San Francisco and you want to see the Golden Gate Bridge, or if you want to see Golden Gate Park, or if you want to go into the Marin Headlands, there's tons of people already there. There's tons of tourists everywhere. And anything that's iconic, that's well-known, like Yosemite, it's going to have tons of people already there, and it immediately detracts from the appeal of these places. It's like you go there and say, okay, I've seen the Golden Gate Bridge, I walk across it, but you can't really experience it because there's crowds of people there already. Are you ever going to go back to California, or did you leave California for good? No, I, I'm not. I'm not moving back. I, I may. I may not. You know, stay in Louisiana forever, but I'm never going back to California. Hey guys, so if anything I just talked about upset you or made you sad or mad, well then do something about it. Call your local leaders and demand change. Chip in and help those in need. Make your community better because communities don't get better without hard work and determination. America's a great place. It just needs some more love and pride. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production. And are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. 
You can get my email in the description to find out how I can help you find your perfect relocation.